Hello everyone, I am Vikram P. Maduri here. Welcome to JL Soft Tech. In this session, let's discuss about a few more uh, topics, a few more uh, uh, issues on uh, project 1 and uh, we need to cover a few more topics on project 1 in which uh, we, have, we have actually uh, seen how to create a database table in SAP S4 HANA platform and uh, in this uh, session we're going to look at uh, uh, some some more aspects of it like creation of database table using top-down approach uh, how to uh, you know uh, go with the top-down approach in the in the previous session we have seen a uh, bottom-up approach and using currency fields and also quantity fields so how to handle the currency and quantity fields buffering options what are the different options that we have in buffering and HANA specific new features that we have in the uh, you know SAP HANA database uh, platform So these are the these are the you know domains and data elements that we have discussed if at all if you are looking out for SAP trainings you can reach us at info at and um, we'll reply you back on this okay so whenever we have a field of type currency we need to mention a currency and if at all if you have a field of type quantity we need to uh, mention the unit we need to link that unit to that particular field for example if at all if i'm telling uh, if i'm mentioning the amount as 250 and i don't have a unit or i don't have a currency it does not make a sense so if at all if you have to mention that 250 it has to be rupees 250 or dollar 250 so 250 dollars or 250 rupees so when uh, amount is linked with a unit only then that makes sense and coming to the quantity if at all if you have a quantity let's say i say 10 so at the 10 i need to mention whether it is kgs meters liters or there should be some unit for that so for these type of two fields it is mandatory for us to give the additional field as a supporting field so that it completes the you know information otherwise the information will be half filled so when we see this particular fields if at all if we are giving a field as salary and i'm giving this as z sal underscore de which we have not created so we are uh, we are doing uh, we are creating it in a top down approach where it'll, we don't have the data element i double click on it say yes and do you want to create the data element say yes and in this we'll create that something like a salary and here we'll go for z sal underscore devo this is also not there double click on it say yes and click on local object say yes salary go for character length as something like no not character sorry so data type should be the currency and the length is something like say 10 decimals you can give it as something like two and then activate this then back and uh, activate this one as well back now this data element is successfully created now for the salary we need a supporting field called uh, uh, the currency so that that will mention it as uh, you know the supporting salary cur so salary currency so i'll put this as z s a l z s c u underscore d e and double click on this say yes data element yes so I'll put it as currency key and here I'll put as szcu underscore devo and it doesn't exist so continue you can also do all these things uh, in the 
bottom up approach as well since in this uh, topic we are discussing the top down approach i am doing it in this way so then salary currency and data type would be z no here we are going to pick it from here the drop down we have something called currency key so i'll select it as currency key mm, the number of characters is by default 5 activate this local object actually in fact like i have saved everything in package so you can also go back and save it in a package yeah so anyways it's fine because we are practicing it so just say okay back and once it's been done you have the currency key now what are we going to do is we are going to attach this particular field link this field as a currency for this salary so let's go to the currency fields In this it is expecting a currency so let's give, give the table name as zjh underscore emp this is the current table and you can also take the reference from other other tables as well zslcur is the field name so this is what is expected here save it now the similar thing happens for uh, you know uh, for the type quantity as well so i'll go with something like quantity so quantity is something like uh, um, i'll go with uh, any particular field like the number of uh, um, say for employee we can say something like there is some field which is having number of cage cages or something like that so i'll take this as something like weight okay so weight is also important let's assume that weight is also important z weight so now when you say z weight and i'll double click on this say yes say yes weight z weight underscore devo continue double click on this say yes weight and data type should be this is for quantity so you have something called quantity i'll select this quantity and the length i will give it as something like 10 save it local object activate once it's been done back and these are the properties activate the data element as well once you go back you have this created now you need to create a unit for this so weight unit z weight unit says double click on this say yes yes unit say w unit double click on this say yes local object yes unit and here you will give it as something like now here we need to search for that particular field For the unit this is unit and I'll take this length as something like 5 activate back actually the number of positions here should be 3 so activate this now back unit actually entertains uh, three characters so once it's been done activate the data element as well and then back and now you can see that w unit is also created when we go back to currency fields here also it is expecting a field here also it's expecting an input field so we'll give it as zjh underscore emp and uh, the field is w unit so once it's been done save it
and once uh, yeah this has been successfully saved so we'll activate this warnings will be there so uh, to avoid the warnings uh, we have to go for enhancement categories so we, we got the warnings now so we'll 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 remove that warnings as well but this is how we have to fix up the you know salary and uh, if at all if you have uh, uh, fields of type currency and quantity these are the supporting fields that reference table and reference fields that we need to mandatorily mention otherwise the system will throw an error so this is what uh, we have uh, just seen here and okay so once it's been done so we wanted to discuss about something like uh, uh, the technical settings we'll go to the technical settings and in the technical settings we gave it as appl0 so most probably we will be creating a, a table of type master data trans or transaction data R rest of all the things we will not be creating most of the times so then here in the buffering we'll have buffering not allowed buffering allowed but switched off buffering activated so most of the times we'll be going for buffering if it's or if at all if you go for buffering activated then you'll have three types of bufferings first record only can be buffered or generic buffering Gen generic buffering in the sense how many key figures are there those, those many can be activated those, those can be those those many can be buffered so if i go for fully buffering okay fully performance the entire uh, entire table will be buffered so for our understanding let me let me give it this way i'll go to back to the fields and in this say i have say suppose three primary fields then if we go to the technical settings and see in the in the in the generic buffering buffering allowed yeah buffering allowed and in this we have something called generic buffering and in the generic buffering we have something like number of fields so the number of fields will be can be one one to two or one to three so i'll give something like one to two or something like that so only two fields can be uh, you know buffered okay so just for i mean like it can entertain only the primary keys so if you have three primary keys since we have three primary keys it's giving us an option like you can buffer from one to one 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 to two or one to three so all these are the buffering options that we'll have save it back and once it's been done so we want to check uh, uh, other other thing is like we wanted to check the various new options that we are being given in the uh, in the in the hana database so we have in general properties we have seen these things but then again we have something called data database specific properties in this we have the column store row store and undefined so column store basically stores the data in a columnar basis so if i have discussed this column based storage and row based storage in a in a completely altogether different session you can search for it i have a different session for that and you can get idea about what exactly is column storage and row storage and by default every every database table which is created in sap hana platform uh, it will be a columnar store later you can also change it as row store so when we will in short when we will be using for column store as like whenever we have uh, whenever we have to access the data more than loading the data you will go for column store so i repeat column store is for read read only access i mean like if you have more read only options then you can go for column store i mean uh, regularly reading rarely updating you will go for column storage but regularly updating rarely viewing you can you'll go for row storage by default all the previous tables that we had before the hana platform were all stored in row storage whereas in columnar storage it will be like uh, it will have more performance based uh, capabilities uh, which uh, i have discussed in the theoretical part in which we have discussed the, the differences between the database uh, columnar storage and the row storage So yeah, that's it for this session. And if you like our videos, uh, for more such videos, do subscribe to our channel www.youtube.com slash jadesofttech and do not forget to click on the bell button so that you will get uh, regular updates on what are the videos that we have making it, uh, making up and you can get that enrolled. So uh, I mean like you can also write to us on our mail ID. Okay, thanks for watching this video. Have a great day.